Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending May 10th. If you were watching last week and you took my advice and got on board with Netflix, you slid under the door probably just before the price increase happened. May 8th was the actual last day. You could get on board at the old price. Now they raised it a dollar. I did predict they were probably going to raise it two dollars, so that was kind of nice. But yeah, if you didn't get in under the window and you didn't listen, you'll be paying a dollar extra. Um, one nice thing is all of those people that are currently that have been signed up before the deadline, you get a price protection for two full years. So I would say overall, uh, with Netflix having to do what they did, they did a pretty decent thing. Um, they were pretty much going to be needing at least an extra dollar increase in the fees anyway because of that deal they made with Comcast. Um, I guess now they're kind of rolling over, and for the large providers that provide the bandwidth they need to stream the movies, they're actually doing some payoffs there to uh, make sure they don't get throttled back. Not sure if I like that idea so much, but, you know, it's something they're having to deal with right now. And next up, this is from City Room uh, Bird Watching. The World Series of Bird Watching takes place in New Jersey. And it took place this weekend. It took, takes place every year, and this weekend it took place in New Jersey. And there's a little bit of a squabble going on in the bird watching community. Um, there's two different people it talks about here. One guy's named Mr. Van Doren, a 20 year old bird watcher, and Mr. Dunn, a 62 year old bird watcher. And they're uh, getting into a little squabble about whether they should use technology in bird watching or not. Right now, the old timers want to keep it with a set of binoculars and a logbook, and you just basically use a, an honor system to write down which birds you identified based on either seeing them or based on the bird calls whereas uh, younger people like uh, Mr. Van Doren wants to be able to use all the latest and greatest gadgets. He's got a $2,500 camera set up, uh, an iPhone stocked with digital field guides and apps, uh, GPS and then uh, wanting to be able to use the bird calls too. I guess the way they have it right now you can uh, go in your car and listen to the bird calls, but you're not allowed to broadcast any of the bird calls. I can kind of see that being a point, too, because if you were out in the field broadcasting the bird calls with any kind of volume, you could have somebody else that was doing the contest to um, identify it as an actual bird call. So, yeah, I would say that part. But, uh, yeah, what do you guys think about a lot of these things to where uh, technology is entering in? A lot of the old-timers don't want it to change. I remember back in ham radio when they were talking about, and they finally did do away with the Morse code, qualification to be able to get your ham license for a shortwave radio that a lot of the old timers didn't like the idea they wanted to, other people to do it the way they did it so anyway if you get a chance check out this article from city room and as usual all the links to all of the articles i'm talking about will be down in the description below next up this is from forbes uh, this still has not been an official announcement but it kind of seems like a done deal the way everybody's been talking about it for a few days but Apple supposedly is going to offer up to $3.2 billion to uh, get the Beats, Dr. Dre, the Beats headphone set and all the accompanying, um, what do you call it, hardware and licensing and everything like that. Uh, people are speculating as to why they are really needing to do it. I guess iTunes right now is not really going so well. Less and less people are downloading. They tried their own streaming radio service, which didn't work too good. And they want to kind of compete with places like Pandora and stuff like that. Supposedly, um, there's a uh, the Beats with Dr. Dre already have 10,000 to 20,000 subscribers on their music service. So uh, maybe Apple's doing it for that reason. They're thinking, could it possibly be that Apple wants to improve the Beats headphones themselves? Um, they have, uh, Apple themselves has the inventor, let me get his name here, Tomlinson Holman, the inventor of THX and uh, uh, co-inventor of 5.1 Surround Sound. It's an engineer with Apple. And uh, I've heard a lot of reviews. I don't know if anybody else has the Beats by Dr. Dre. From the reviews I have heard, it's uh, a really cool-looking headphone. It's got a lot of nice features. It folds up nicely. Two sets of uh, um, plug-in cords, one that includes a microphone. So a lot of cool features like that. But for a retail price of $200, um, some people say it's more equivalent to about a $60 headphone. So you're buying it more for a fashion statement. I looked up on Amazon, and you can actually now pick them up for $144 pretty easy. And I looked up the used listings, and in the used listings, there was even one brand new in the box for $80, and they listed it as used just because the corner of the box had a little bit of damage, but otherwise, same guarantee, same warranty. So um, you can't actually pick up a set of them, I guess, if you look around for around $80. Bucks, so. um, 
maybe at that price point, I'd be willing to even buy them myself if I needed a new set of really good quality headphones. They say for, uh, you know, if you could get the price down around 60 bucks, they would be a pretty decent set of headphones. But anyway, what do you think about that? Does Apple really need that? And is that a, kind of a high price to pay to pick up all the licensing to uh, Dr. Dre's Beats headphones and all the accompanying intellectual property? And last up, this is just kind of something that uh, crossed my mind. Look, and, and I'm not really a, a fan of this show, and I never really watched it. I don't really know much about it. It's uh, the show 24 with uh, Jack Bauer. And I just happened to look through this USA Today article because it said throwback outdated spy gadgets from 2001. And I scrolled down, and I was almost going to just... It, it, the article itself, I didn't really think it was anything spectacular. But I got to the middle part, and I saw this picture of... Uh, the, the main character must be Jack Bauer, um, talking into an intercom. Um, I was just thinking myself, when was the last time I actually saw a working wired intercom? And I think actually I've seen more recently, I've actually seen a dial phone than I've actually seen a wired working intercom. I think the last time I remember one of those and having it actually being of practical use was in the 70s when my dad wired one between the house and the garage when I was a teenager. And I cannot recall since then actually seeing anybody with a wired inter intercom. In fact, I was surprised. I checked on Radio Shack to see did they even sell intercoms anymore. They sell wireless versions. Um, although still, I can't really see why that's practical because everybody carries a cell phone with them so, you know, all on their person now. So why would you really need an intercom? Um, I did look on Amazon, and they still do sell wired income wired intercoms I can't talk today wired intercoms on uh, Amazon for around 30 40 bucks but uh, mainly my question is is it such an old gadget that does anybody actually still have a practical use for it do you still use a regular regular wired intercom and even a wireless intercom um, what does it really accomplish I mean maybe the only thing I could really think of myself I guess is if you've got a lot of uh, people soliciting at the front door and stuff like that, maybe using an intercom for that instead of walking all the way to the door, just, you know, talk to them through the intercom box or something like that. But, yeah, um, an old gadget that just kind of surprised me in an article, and I just wanted to ask you guys about it. What do you think about that, an old um, wired intercom? Do you uh, know anybody, actually, that still uses one of these? Well, I'm wishing everybody a uh, happy Mother's Day. If you uh, if your mom is still alive, uh, try to make an effort to communicate with her, spend some time with her. If your mom is not, maybe take a few minutes aside and think about the, the nice things about your mom. And uh, So anyway, take care, everybody. I'll catch you next week.